Hello again. On the Sunday I visited the London Transport Museum, which is devoted to the history of public transport in the capital. May I say at once that I'm perfectly well aware that there is something indescribably sad about the idea of some old gimp shuffling around a museum of that kind, staring at trolley buses and muttering, "Ee, I remember them from when I was a lad. Let's take all that as read, yeah? I was fascinated to see how even this museum is determined to show that the staff are no slouches when it comes to anti-racism and multiculturalism. For instance, there are many buses in the museum, along with photographs of bus drivers from long ago. Not one of these men from the past is named, except for a special panel which deals with a Jamaican guy called Joseph Clough. He was the first black bus driver in London. My own grandfather drove a bus in London, as did thousands of other people, but their names are not worth mentioning, it seems. Just Joseph Clough. I mean, being black in charge of a motor vehicle isn't that much of a remarkable achievement, is it, really? Still, the fact that 110 years ago, before the First World War, a black man could get a job like that on the buses indicates to me that perhaps racism is, was not quite as severe as we've been led to believe. The museum is keen to dispel that notion by saying that following uh, Clough's getting a job as a bus driver, this happened. Although generally accepted by his colleagues, Joe was wrongfully suspended by, for speeding by a racist company official. His excellent driving record and good character led to his rapid reinstatement. It was not the last time he encountered racism, whether casual or overt. I give a link to this um, piece of text in the description to this video. After looking into all this in some detail, I have no idea at all how the people who said this could possibly know that the official was racist. It was over a century ago. I'm pretty sure that the staff at the museum just wanted to put the word racist on the display and that this was as good an opportunity as any. In an exhibition called Hidden London, there was stuff about the London Underground during the war, and I was curious to know how they had managed to work black people or racism into that period of history. Never underestimate the ingenuity of dedicated anti-racists. There was a, d a display of black and white photographs showing people sheltering from the blitz in tube stations, and also staff working on the London Underground at that time. The thumbnail to this video shows one of the pictures on display, which was taken in 1948, of some of the men from the Empire Windrush who were housed in a shelter under Clapham South Tube Station. Clever, eh? Nothing at all to do with the subject of the display, which was the underground during the war, but at least it was a chance to show a few black people. Another picture was even more cunning. Among a lot of photographs showing people working on the tube during the war, including some men incidentally with a ferret that was used to catch rats, which was interesting, there was a faded black and white picture of a black woman standing on the track of an underground station. The caption was, Fluffer at work. Fluffers are people on the tube that go there at night and clean uh, all the dirt and fluff off the rails. I was interested in this picture because I didn't know that there were any black women working on the underground at that time. In very small print on the bottom of the picture though, minuscule print, was the information that this picture had been taken in 1992. They had actually taken a colour photograph from the 1990s of a black woman 
turned it into black and white and then slipped it in with some other pictures so that it looked as though black people were working on the tube during World War II. Magnificent. Something else which amused me was an animated display on the screen in the museum explaining the future of tickets on the tube and railways. As viewers may know, 30 years ago, the population of London was fewer than 7 million. Today, it's over 9 million. The animation announced that it is predicted that over the next 20 years, the number of people using tube stations and railway stations in London is predicted to double. It seems that the solution is to scan your face into your mobile telephone and then send it to London Transport. They will then use it for some up-to-date artificial intelligence face recognition system. And as you pass through a, the entrance to the tube station, you will have the money taken automatically by London Transport from your bank account. It's not operating yet, but this is what they're working on and hoping to introduce soon. The idea is it will make it easier for dealing with all those millions of extra people living and travelling in London in the future. It will speed things up. It will apparently be very expensive and complicated to get this system up and running. You know what? I'm no expert on either face recognition or the logistics of transporting millions of people around a big city but I can think of a much easier scheme for avoiding delays and making things run a bit more smoothly. How about the population of London not growing by millions in the next 20 years? Now how can we prevent the exponential growth of the capital and all the consequent overcrowding? I think I can see a way, but it might entail getting a new Home Secretary. <laughs>